Stingray is a powerful device that can make your phone heal to its master. It's heavily used by law enforcement and governments in general. You can also make a hacker's homegrown version of this using your own radio transmitter. It's known to be used in protests to track who is in the area and can spy on or block your phone signal. In this video, I'll go into deep detail about how this device works and what it can do to your phone. This is part two of the Who's Spying on Your Phone series, so it will delve into more detail than you have likely ever heard before. Let's get on with it. If you haven't watched the introductory video, part one, that explains all the many ways our phones have been turned into surveillance devices, you may want to watch that first. As I promised in that first video, I'll give you a lot of detail how these devices can surveil you through your phone and you will find source references in the description. The original Stingray was cloaked in secrecy and its use in the US was heavily masked with secret agreements between the manufacturer, the Harris Corporation, and each law enforcement agency. It was kept so secret that it was not mentioned in court documents. For over a decade, it was used without a warrant. That rule was only modified a couple of years ago. If you want to see it mentioned, Google the search warrant for Michael Cohen in Washington, DC, you know, for the Trump attorney. And you'll see a reference to Stingray or its portable version called Kingfish. Stingray is an IMSI catcher device. I'll explain in a moment what IMSI is, but it was actually first developed in Germany in 1996. In a sense, it is nothing more than a portable cell base station, or otherwise known as a BTS. The Stingray version made by Harris Corporation has offensive capabilities. I only have a limited idea, but it is a lot already. But everything I say here comes from technical documentation and information from hackers who have tried to defeat the device. Let me introduce you first to a couple of terms that is important to understand the cell network. Each mobile station or MS mobile station in cell parlance is identified by an IMSI or International Mobile Subscriber Identity. This unique number identifies your phone's cell carrier subscription anywhere in the world by comparing the IMSI to a database called the Home Location Register or HLR. Your phone can then be identified as being home or being away from a particular carrier or network. This is important to understand. The HLR is worldwide and it's a register for billions of phones in use. The MZ is in your SIM card on a GSM phone. Change the SIM card and you change the MZ. But you cannot do it so simply on a CDMA phone since it has no SIM card. So on CDMA phones, the IMZ data is written into flash memory on the mobile device itself by the carrier when you sign up with them. This should make you think about using a CDMA phone or the newer phones which will have no SIM card. The SIM card physically has a verification key burned into it. Same with the flash memory version. So simply having a valid MZ doesn't grant you access to a network. You have to validate a challenge response authentication. This way, no one can steal your phone service without the physical SIM card. However, someone can duplicate the physical SIM card or create a new one with the proper key in the fake SIM card. So bad guys know how to do this. Now your device has another identifier, which is hard coded to the cell baseband modem itself. This is the IMEI or the International Mobile Equipment Identity. This cannot be modified, at least not legally. Each phone has a different IMEI. When you sign into a cell network, the IMZ is validated against the Home Location Registry HLR, then it validates the IMEI against the Equipment Identity Register or EIR. This is a block list and is intended to identify stolen phones. So if a device is listed in the EIR, then it cannot be used anywhere in the world. Note that this is a block list and not 
an IMEI register, so that at least is some good news. Notice how the IMZ is even more important than the phone number. It appears that only your cell carrier actually communicates using the phone number, but the actual call switching is done by IMZ when used in mobile. Back to Stingray. Stingray, as I said earlier, is an IMZ catcher. It's basically a fake cell base station or fake BTS. As a base station, it is able then to listen to the air for phones searching or communicating with a BTS and capturing their IMZ. Or in the LTE world, a phone sends a probe out using an IMZ token and not the IMZ itself. This is a security feature on LTE. Don't worry, it's not a big deal to get the IMZ from the token. You just send the phone a reject message and the phone will send its IMZ to explain itself. A Stingray has two modes of operation, a passive attack or an active attack. In an active attack, the Stingray fakes a base station, then it persuades the phone to connect to it instead of the real base station. Then it downgrades the connection to remove the encryption. Once the communications are in the clear, the attacker becomes a man in the middle and can then intercept and even tamper with the data transfer between the phone and the cell tower. In a passive attack, Stingray simply collects all the MZ identifiers in an area. It will monitor the interactions between the mobile stations and the BTS or cell tower, but without intercepting the signal and being a man in the middle. A Stingray can be as small as a handheld device, especially if used only in passive mode. For example, a person can put a Stingray device hidden on his body and walk in a protest area and capture all the MZs nearby, thus having a clear record of who was at a protest based on their phones. A Stingray can also be mounted on a drone to just fly over a crowd and capture all the IMSIs in the area. The Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, documented a specific use of Stingray in the South Dakota pipeline protest. People in the protest noted everything from DDoS, denial of service attacks on their phone, and social media monitoring. There are many protests in countries where people have photographs of vehicles with antennas and strange suitcases. As I mentioned earlier, all MZs can easily be identified in the HLR or Home Location Register database, which is available worldwide. Now, how much information is known about you on the HLR is dependent on your carrier. As you all know, many cell subscriptions require a credit check, so think about it. Now, what can an active Stingray attack do? One, it can extract the MZ. Two, it can write data into the phone, presumably like a carrier update. Now, this is the part that we don't know exactly how much can be done, and we're not sure. Three, it can force the phone to increase the transmitting signal, which can drain the battery. Four, it can monitor the communications, including the phone conversation, the SMS traffic, and the internet data, such as IP addresses and the actual internet traffic. Number five, it can track the location of the user. Number six, it can DDoS the device or do a denial of service. Seven, it can export encryption keys related to cell communications. Eight, it can actually introduce interference to the cell service. Nine, it can do silent SMS or silent texting, which can issue commands to your phone, like make a dial out and reveal text messages. Silent SMS is basically remote control of your phone. If you have a Stingray device, you can monitor all the IMSIs in the area and then choose to target one specific one. Or if you already know a particular IMZ, then you can go directly to the IMZ you want to track. Now, if the phone is not connected to a cell network, Stingray will persuade the phone to connect to it. This is done first by making sure the Stingray BTS signal is stronger. So in an active attack, it will need a larger antenna. You will find Stingrays mounted on the roof of surveillance vehicles or in large suitcases. In LTE, a phone develops an affinity with the particular cell tower or BTS. So while it's connected, you cannot just interfere. It is much easier to interfere with GSM. But not to worry, hackers have figured it out. All they have to do is send interference so you lose the signal. 
This is easily duplicated on the cell frequencies. Just then interference and your phone will begin to hunt for a new cell tower. Afterwards, if the attacker doesn't want you to make a call, then your device is sent reject messages and also redirect messages to drain your battery with high power transmissions, as well as give you no cell service. So be aware that sudden cell data loss, battery loss in an area that usually has good service may be intentional. Now, the way the typical attack works is to downgrade your signal to 3G. The reason is that 3G can be made to have no encryption. At the moment, I am not sure what the attack is on a network without 3G as far as doing a man in the middle. I don't think this is known yet. All the attacks discussed by hackers so far have focused on downgrading the signal to 3G. But this is what we know for now. So another sign of Stingray is when your signal downgrades to 3G. I hear that when your phone is downgraded to 3G that it will require a reboot for it to go hunt for LTE again. But this is not a certainty because there's a redirect attack where you can be persuaded to connect to a particular BTS or cell tower. Now some of you will say that this doesn't pertain to you because you don't go to protests or you're not committing crimes. Let me just make this clear to you. Stingray tracking is indiscriminate. If you're in the area, you're tracked. Your phone IMSI could be in some court data somewhere. It could be used to track behaviors like in-passive tracking. For example, it would be no big deal to track the IMSIs of phones entering specific buildings. Also understand that anyone can build an IMSI catcher. It may not have the sophistication of the actual Stingray by Harris Corporation, but even passive tracking of IMSIs is very interesting. For example, if you go through a hand search area or x-ray machine and they track your IMSI and photo simultaneously, it can be a dangerous example of surveillance that can be used anywhere. If you're targeted by someone, even by a hacker, again, it would be a simple matter to send DDoS, denial of service attacks on your cell service. This just requires a carrier reject message to be sent over and over to a specific MZ. It doesn't require mass area RF interference. There are also tools out there that can send silent SMS messages. Mostly these are used for cybersecurity testing, but they are available. And if you're a hacker and you know about the SimJacker attack and the commands, you can send commands to the phones. As I mentioned earlier, you can make your own BTS or cell base station and thus be able to do some limited attacks on mobile stations, just like Stingray. You can do it with a radio transmitter like USRP or Blade RF. There is an open source BTS project called Osmocom BB, which actually emulates a cell tower or BTS that can teach you the syntax of a conversation between a phone and a BTS. Passive monitoring can occur even with a cheap $30 device like an RTL SDR, but you'll need a Blade RF or Hacker One or USRP radio to do things like DDoS interference or carrier reject messages. And by the way, I'm a ham radio operator, so this kind of stuff is really interesting to me and I understand what's going on on the RF side. Okay, so now that I've scared you enough here, how do you determine if you're being attacked by Stingray? There's an app project on Android, it's called AIM SICD. I posted the link in the description. Unfortunately, the project is not updated and there are many bugs. You can download the software as a separate APK file. It's not in the Google Store, it's not on FDroid, but if you have access to the APK file, then you can download it. I'm putting out a link in the description of the APK file so you can download it yourself for your Android. And you can try it out and even if it doesn't work completely, at least some of the data can be useful. Using the data that it does reveal, such as base stations you're connected to, you may be able to see if you're being attacked by Stingray. So here's some of the logic of AIM-SICK-D and how it decides to warn you of a Stingray attack. Number one, it sees if a BTS is persistent. It makes an entry in the database of each cell tower and where it is located. If a cell tower disappears or appears intermittently, or if the number of cell towers change, then it indicates that a Stingray-like device is in the area. Number two is the signal strength. Usually someone being actively attacked with Stingray, and this is in active mode, will see a much stronger cell signal because the cell tower will be nearby. 
meaning in a special vehicle. Look for vehicles around you with antennas or a place to hide an antenna. You probably will not find a passive stingray attacker since that gives out no interference or signal. But an active attack will require more powerful antennas. This means I'd worry about vans and probably vehicles with antennas with plain colors like black or white and windows covered. Three, look at your phone for a 3G downgrade. If your phone is an LTE phone and it's going to 3G, then it is a possible sign of an actual MITM attack. Four, if the cell tower keeps changing its location ID, it's a sign of Stingray. Whenever the location ID is changed, the phone will send its location to the cell tower. Five, you can be getting denial of service attacks. If you keep losing signals with the cell tower, there could be active interference in one of two ways. There could be a general jamming of the cell frequency range, which is typically in the 800 megahertz to 1.2 gigahertz range. This could be spotted with an RTL SDR, where you can see the actual interference sent using a spectrum analyzer. Or you could be getting a more direct phone specific attack by your MZ being targeted with carrier reject messages. This can easily be discovered by changing SIM cards. Again, intermittent behavior will make this more suspect. If you're in an area with a weak cell signal anyway, then it's not likely to be an attack. But what you're looking for is something that is out of the ordinary. If your phone is stuck on 3G and you have to reboot the phone to go back to LTE, then you will likely have been subjected to an MITM man in the middle attack using Stingray. Now, just to make it clear, passive attacks or DDoS attacks will leave no trace. It is not a certainty that an MITM attack will cause a downgrade to 3G. It is what we currently know, but this could change. There may be new information on Stingray that I'm not aware of. I've gathered this information slowly over the years, but those heavily into mobile security research may have things to add. In which case, please do so in the comments below or contact me privately on Brax.me. For those of you without one of those new Linux phones with kill switches, understand that GSM phones will have a simple defense. Remove the SIM card. Since the primary identifier is MZ, removing the SIM card removes the MZ. Although you're still able to make 911 calls in the US, your phone has to reach out. It's, it's not emitting a cell probe that can be tracked. I'm wary of CDMA phones and new phones that will have no SIM card. We will have one less protection. Be aware of where you are. Wearing anonymous masks at a protest in Hong Kong with your phone leaking your MZ is just plain stupid. Take off the SIM card or carry a Linux phone with a kill switch. This is part two of the Who's Spying on Your Phone series. If you missed part one, please watch that video and I will come up with more on this series in the weeks to come. So please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell if you want to see more. Thank you for watching.